Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Things. Um, since I've discovered this angle from the last video, and since I'm also filming this in the same day, I mean, might as well utilize this nice view behind me. As you can see, the torch is still burning because it is still a dark and stormy night. But we thought about, we, as in me, thought about talking about another thing that I got recently, and that is Atari 8-bit computers. Now, I got two different models, and I will show you the boxed one first. Oh, you buddy. Here we go. This is the Atari 800XL computer, as you can see here, completely boxed up. Now, I did have a second one of these that is not in working order, unfortunately. Somebody tried to fix it and did a terrible solder job. Now, I'm going to attempt to correct their soldering ability and hope that's what's wrong with it. I have a feeling it has caused other problems. If anything, it's going to just be a piece mounted on the wall going forward. But besides the 800XL, we're going to move on to the other model that I picked up all at the same time, and that is the 130XE. Now this was one of the last models before they did the XEGS, which was the XE game system, which just had the cartridge slot, and you had a separate keyboard if you wanted it. Um, I don't believe it was fully compatible with the tape drive and all the other um, expansions that went on to this port here. Um, that's the peripheral port. You didn't have the expansion port here, as well as the cartridge slot. Um, Let's scoot up a bit here so you can see a little better. Um, we do have the on and off switch here. We have the power, which is very similar to Commodore 64, but not quite the same. Uh, RF out with the channel switch, and video AV out, or monitor out, which actually is the same cable as the Commodore 64, and is how I can get an AV signal out of here, which is good, because the... Uh, RF signal is not very great. Uh, looking at the front of this model, we have a kind of squish, not a very good keyboard. The 800 has a much better, much, much better keyboard. Um, but since it's box, I'm leaving it box because this one can play any game from any era. And what I mean by that is, let me show you some of the cartridges that we have over here. Starting off with what they looked like originally in the late 70s, early 80s, which was a metal left cartridge game. Um, this is Defender. This is what the original series of games looked like on the system. Um, they're actually got metal, which is kind of surprising. Uh, very strong, robust cartridge. Very brown. Very old looking. As you can say, uh, moving on from there, you had the, I guess, the second range of Atari produced cartridges, which look like this, which would have been from the XL days. Um, yeah, a little basic plastic uh, exposed chip this time. You know, it not quite as nice as the other one. Then they went on to the XE days, and you ended up with something more like this. Uh, Close to the other XL, this one is XE branded. Um, of course, still an open exposed chip as compared to the first one. This time has an Atari logo on the back, which the other ones did not. Then you had your off brands. For example, you had Activision's, uh, you have River Raid here, and their little stylized cartridge. And that's kind of cool. Um, you know, I always thought Activision games were the best in the 2600. They had the nice colorful labels. Um, you know, this kind of lives up to it. Maybe if it wrapped around the top, it would have been a little better. And the reason why I know they could do that is because this uh, strange, strange knockoff yet official game, uh, Deluxe Invaders, which is a faded cartridge at this point, by Rogue... I can't tell if that's an I or an L on all three spots. Roclan or Rokian um, Corporation. You know, it's in a weird, weird yellow cartridge. Um, 
course, exposed pins on it. There's some writing in here. Oh, here we go. Roclan. There's an L. There's a definite L inside of here, which you're not going to be able to see. The reason why I'm showing all this is because, just like the 2600 in most Atari systems, the cartridge just, just could be anything. Uh, I guess that was just the thing from back then. The NES era, you know, Master System, they tried to regulate this. Genesis kind of did, but by the time they hit Super Nintendo, you had one shape for the rest of the extent of cartridge systems. So now that that's over with, let's uh, record some footage of the 130XE running through the Avermedia box, and we shall see what it looks like. And this is us seeing exactly what it looks like, and I am actually very happy with how this turned out. Um, much better representation than what RF looks like. So yes, this is a fond hello from a misspelled Gen 10 station, which I did fix it. Um, one thing about these keyboards is the backspace button in itself is not exactly where, <laughs> yeah, oops, in the wrong place. Um, it's not where they are on modern keyboards. Um, it, it is one character, or one key to the left of that, which can be a little confusing. So yes, uh, time for a game, so you do have to switch it off. Then you go select your cartridge, which I am doing now in this black void that you can see. I am pulling out a game cartridge and putting it into the back of the game, uh, this a game system, it's more of a computer. Then you switch it back on, and you automatically boot. And so this is Defender, this is from the metal old cartridge days. Uh, it's a very nice version of Defender. I am playing here with a Sega Genesis controller, mostly just because I want smooth gameplay. Um, clearly this has a DB9 port, if I didn't mention that before, I will mention that now. It does have a DB9 controller port, which is the same as the Atari 2600 and Master System and Genesis. So any of those controllers, oh, and 7800. Anything from that time period will work on this uh, computer. I just find the Genesis controller is probably the best of the lot to pick from. Um, it doesn't make me that much better at the game. Um, but I was enjoying myself here playing this, even though I wasn't doing so well. Um, you know, I, I at least went through a couple of waves. Um, you know, the, at least you got explosions on this version that went very nicely. Uh, very good version of Defender. So now I'm going to be switching out for a different game. Um, there are as many variations of company cartridges as there was on the 2600. So, for example, there is a Frogger game that is in a Parker Brothers style um, cartridge that is similar to what you would find on a 2600. Now, here I am playing that weird old uh, Deluxe Invaders. Uh, Plays pretty nice. There's no, you know, the doot, 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 doot in the background. It's silent. It, you do have the other sound effects. Um, you know, in my opinion, not a terrible, terrible port of the game. Um, here's me and my best attempt <laughs> at trying to make this uh, a decent gameplay video of Deluxe Invaders on the Atari 8-bit line of computers. However, like I have said many times, I don't claim to be an expert. So yeah, you have the UFOs, they get faster and faster as they come down. Um, Space Invaders, you know, I, I enjoy playing the game. That's, I don't know if that's in the other versions of Space Invaders or not. It's a little strange if you ask me. Um, Space Invaders, well, like I said, I enjoy playing the game. It's not my all-time favorite. I feel like the difficulty curve just ramps up as you are clearing your first wave. And 
you know, it's not my favorite. So we're going to switch out. We're going to go over to uh, one of the other third-party games here. We're going to pick out River Raid uh, as I'm getting it set up. Here we go. So to start the games, there is a start key on the computer itself. And yeah, I had to say, this is a pretty bad playthrough of this game. Um, me playing the game very badly. Um, it, like Steve Benwing always says, it's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It is just me playing the game badly so you can see what it looks like. And his words have never been more true than me trying to play through this game here today. Um, graphics wise, I would say 8-bit is on level with the 5200, which, you know, they've said many times the 5200 was an 8-bit computer in a console container. Um, the only difference is you get to play with some decent controllers here. You don't have to deal with the 5200 nonsense, which is very lucky. Um, 5200 would be my favorite Atari of all time, if not for the controllers. So maybe this is now my new favorite. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.